Welcome to Symphony Workshop, I'm Gary Clark and this is part 3 of a multi-part tutorial in which I'm demonstrating how to consume a third-party API using the Symphony HTTP client and test-driven development. If you didn't see the previous recordings I'll leave a link to the playlist at the top of the screen and if you want to pick up where I'm starting off here I'll also leave a link down in the discussion below to the repo all you need to do is choose part 2 or the part 2 branch and that will get you up to speed with where I'm starting from. In part 2 we started driving out functionality using a feature test and we reached a point where we had a dependency on a third party, namely the Yahoo Finance API. So in this one we're going to take care of that dependency using an integration test and test driven development. Some information first, I record in high resolution so there's no need for you to watch on a blurry screen. Choose high definition if that will work for you. Would you like to join a growing group of PHP developers and take your skills to a new level? If that sounds like you, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon and welcome. Okay, before I start trying to ping the API, there's a couple of things I'd like to just take care of first, a couple of edits I'd like to make. This code here I think we can do quite a lot slicker so I'm just going to comment that out for the time being and also I need to be able to handle non 200 responses because if I'm getting non 200 responses it means I've got errors which will prevent me from storing stuff in the database. As far as setting the entity properties is concerned I'm going to use the deserialize method of the Symfony serializer component which is pretty good with those changes in mind, for the time being, I'm going to return an associative array from the fetch stock profile method. Now, it's not very object oriented, but what we're going to do is get this going for now and refactor it later. So rather than be sidetracked by creating my own classes or whatever, I'm going to just return associative array, have a think about it, and I'm pretty sure there'll be something that I can use to improve this later on. So those two keys are going to be status code, which will be an integer, and content, which will be JSON content. The way we deserialize is this. The first argument is the data to be deserialized. Second argument is the class we're deserializing into. And the third argument is the format that the deserialize method should expect. This bit here is just a placeholder. It's going to sit here and not do anything. And it's just there to remind me that I need to come back and handle non 200 status codes before I complete this class. Let's go and run the uh, feature test again and see where we're up to. OK, so we have an error trying to access array offset and value of type null line 52. And so where we're trying to access status code it's telling us here that our dependency isn't working so we're pretty much where we started off from so let's go and create that integration test now and we'll figure out how to get yahoo finance api client returning what we need it to return in my test folder i've created an integration folder and inside of the integration folder i've created the yahoo finance api client test so surprise surprise we're actually going to need the same dependencies database dependencies as what we needed for our previous tests. So rather than duplicate for the third time, I'm going to apply the rule of three and I'm going to create this database dependent test case in order to do a refactoring. That will sit in the test folder and extend the kernel test case. And then for my other tests, I will extend the database dependent test case. I cut the um, setup and tear down from my refresh stock profile test case. And I just need to set the entity manager to protected in order to make that available in the child classes. So same thing for stock test, uh, remove the setup and tear down and extend the database dependent test case. Let's run the stock test again. And we're still green, so that's working fine. Let's do our feature test. And it's still taking us the exact same error as before. So it looks like our changes are also working there. No problem. OK, in our Yahoo Finance API client test, we need to extend the database dependent test case. For this particular test, I'm going to add a couple of annotations, the normal test annotation and also a group annotation. So I'm adding this test to a group called integration and we'll be able to use this later on to exclude this test from running when we run our other tests using some of PHP units built in functionality. I'm simply going to call this test the Yahoo Finance API client returns the correct data 
usual um, three stages of our test set up and do something and make assertions. The first thing I'm going to need is a Yahoo Finance API client itself. Now I don't really want to be newing one up in my test because there's a realistic possibility that I may need to auto-wire other services into there and that could just become a nightmare. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to grab it from the container. And the way I can do that is this self double colon kernel get container and then I call get and I'm passing in a string alias here which I'll have to establish in my config. Next up is the do something part of our test and we know what that is. We need to call the fetch stock profile method of the Yahoo Finance API client and if you remember that takes two arguments which will be the symbol and also the region. So in our case we're going to use Amazon and US and then we need to make assertions. So what kind of assertions do we need to make? For the strings things like symbol, exchange name, etc. These are going to be static. The API is going to return the same data for these every single time we call it. But for some of the numeric values, we're going to get different values. So we need to figure out a way of testing that as well. We're expecting an associative array response. So let's get the data by JSON decoding the content key of the response. So the first ones I'll test are the strings, the static uh, data, which will be unchanged every time. So that's all those symbol, short name, etc. And then what I'll do is I'll assert that the value I'm getting back is a float for price, previous close and for price change. So fair enough. I can't check that I'm getting the correct values back, but I can check that I'm getting the correct types. Let's run the test. And so it's saying you have requested a non-existent service Yahoo Finance API client. So like I said, we're going to have to go over to our config and establish this service. So here I am in config forward slash services dot YAML and underneath the services key, I add the name of the service, which we're going to call Yahoo Finance API client hyphenated lowercase. Then we need to specify the class and in order to be able to access this in our test the way that we're trying to is by saying public should be true. Run the test again, see if anything has changed. And it's saying that now on line 22, we're trying to access an array offset on a null. So we'll have a look at that. We're trying to access this content key, but the response is null. So that's telling us that we're not getting anything back from the fetch stock profile method. And there's a good reason for that. And there it is. We've not actually written any code inside it. So that's what we're going to take care of now. Here's the Yahoo Finance API documentation. In order to use this, by the way, you're going to need to have an account. All I did was I authenticated using my GitHub account. That's probably the quickest and easiest way to do this. The documentation has an example which uses the PHP extension community library HTTP client. Obviously, we're going to use the Symfony HTTP client, but we can look at this and easily figure out what we need to do, I think. Before I start making assertions again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my HTTP client and I'm going to ping that API and grab a response. So I'm adding a constructor to the Yahoo Finance API client. I'm injecting the HTTP client interface. By doing this, Symfony knows to give me the HTTP client component, which I'm going to set as a property. And then to ping the API, I just do this HTTP client request. And so the first argument is the method. The second argument is the URL. I'll set this as a private constant on the class. So I'll go over to the API and grab that value. And it's just this string here. So private constant URL equals, there's a URL. And then I add that as the second argument to the request method. And then the third argument is an array of options. What I'm going to need here is the query parameters and the headers. So I'm just going to initialize a couple of empty arrays for the time being, because that's how we set these values. The query parameters is pretty straightforward. There's only two of them and we've seen them already. We just need to pass the symbol, which will be Amazon. And we're already passing in that as an argument. And we'll also need the region. And in our case for this test, it's going to be US and we're also also passing that in. I'll set the return response as an array 
Our headers is going to be slightly more complex, but the first one's straightforward. We just need this XRapid API host, which is a string, and we can add this as a private constant by just pasting it in. That takes care of the first one. The second one, we're going to need a little more sophistication because it's for the API key. And obviously for security reasons, I don't want to be sharing my API key with everyone because when you authenticate with the app, you get given your own key. So we need to figure out a way of adding that, but without adding it to version control or exposing it in any way whatsoever. And the way we can do it is by binding it as an argument to the service container. So I'm adding this rapid API key as a constructor argument. I initialize it as a property and then I just assign it like this. Now I'm going back up to the constructor and I'm going to copy this rapid API key variable because this needs to be spelled exactly the same. I go over to services YAML and underneath this underscore defaults key, I add a key called bind. Underneath that, I paste in the rapid API key variable. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the value from a local environment variables file. And I'm going to call it rapid underscore API underscore key. Next, I need to create a dot env dot local file, which will be ignored from version control. So I can put whatever I like in here, knowing I'm safe that no one else will see it apart from me. I create the rapid API key key, and I just cut and paste that value from the documentation. With that binding in place, now wherever I inject rapid API key, this rapid API key variable into my constructors, I will receive my rapid API key back, and the value will be whatever I've defined in my local environment variables file. Let's dump out the response and see what we get. Okay, this is looking good. Let's actually dump out the content and see what kind of values we're getting there. We do that by calling the get content method on the response and this is looking good this is JSON content so we know we can work with this let's now resume our test driven approach so let's figure out what we need to do we'll do that by working backwards we know we need to return an array which comprises of two keys the status code which will hard code as 200 and then we need to return some JSON content but it's not just any content we're expecting certain keys in certain formats. I want to take my shortest path back to a green test and then I can refactor from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to JSON encode an associative array of the exact keys and values or types of values as what my test is expecting. And this hopefully should give us a green test. So let's head over to the terminal and run the integration test again. And there we go, we are back to green. So that's a pretty good start. What I'll do is I'll pull this array out, I'll assign it to a variable, and then what we'll do is we'll look at swapping out each individual value for values that we're actually getting back from the uh, Yahoo API. I think some of these string ones should be fairly straightforward because they all map with the exact same name and they're all found at the top level of um, of this price key here so as you can see short name exchange name currency all sat at the top level underneath the price key first things first we'll decode the response content and that'll give us a php object nice and easy to work with and we'll grab the price key we'll dump that out into the terminal so we don't have to keep going back to the documentation and we should be able to use that data to find exactly what we need for each of our values so back to the terminal, run the test again. Okay, this is looking good. The Symphony VAR dumper makes this stuff so easy to read. Let's just pick them off one by one. So I can see short name there. I'll grab that, go back over to the code, and then underneath short name, I'm just going to do stock profile, right arrow, short name. And that should work. I've done the same for all the other strings except region. I'm going to take that from the argument that I pass into the method. Now we need to work on these numeric values. So here's one for previous close. I need regular market previous close. And nested underneath that, there is a key called raw, R-A-W. So stock profile, regular market previous close, raw. For the price... It's similar. I need regular market price and nested underneath that there is also a key called raw. So stock profile, regular market price, raw. 
Now to get the price change, I need to deduct the regular market previous close from regular market price. I think we can run our tests again. Let's go back to the terminal and see what we get. And we're green, excellent. Now with me having hard coded the 200 status code, I'm making the assumption that it'll only reach that point if it's a 200. So I need to put something in here to handle non 200 responses. What I'm going to do for now is just put in a placeholder. It won't actually do anything. It's just an empty if conditional, which will remind me that I need to complete this step at some point. I'm taking the test driven approach. I won't actually write any code here anyway without writing the test first. Now I know that my tests are passing, but I just want to have one last sanity check. I'm just going to dump out exactly what is coming back for the stock profile so I can see it with my own eyeballs. And there we go. So we knew what to expect for all the strings, but these are our numerical values, which all look very similar to the ones that we saw in the API documentation. So now we have a Yahoo Finance API client. We've driven out functionality with an integration test. We can now resume where we left off with our feature test knowing that this is taken care of and it works and it returns the data exactly how we want it. So let's take a pause there. Hopefully you've managed to follow along. If you do have any questions, comments or feedback regarding this recording or any of the other recordings in this series, post them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you and I do respond to them all. And if you're enjoying this test driven approach, you're welcome to give the video a like and please don't hesitate to share if you want to help others like yourself help each other out that is what this channel is all about and if you would like youtube to show you more of my content all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon i release new recordings twice a week and details of my schedule can be found on the discussion tab of my youtube homepage.